Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the one o'clock block on a given Tuesday. And this is Code Green with the progenitor of Code Green, Howard, Howard, Howard Wig with DBED. Thank you so much for joining us today on your show, Howard. I'm glad to be the hostess. Okay, we'll leave that in the road. <clears throat> so let's talk about the subject today. It's about ultraviolet light. In fact, mm -hmm. you guys have organized a webinar with an expert in ultraviolet light and how mm -hmm. it, um, you know, it how, how it helps uh, dealing with uh, COVID. In fact, the mm -hmm. title of the show is the germicidal properties of ultraviolet light uh, in the time of COVID. And so mm -hmm. this fellow is out of New York and you're going to have a 90 minute webinar with him not to see a few days from now or later this week. Mm -hmm. His name is William Banfleth. And he's an author, author of many technical publications uh, regarding ultraviolet light. So why are you doing this, Howard? Well, because I don't know if you've heard yet, Jay, but we're in the rather troubled times. And especially the hospitality industry is hurting just a wee little bit, namely tens and tens of thousands of people out of work. They weren't doing all that well to begin with. Now they're getting desperate. Let's get rid of the COVID so that we can bring people back into hotels and get these people back employed again. And the other side of me says, no, no, I don't want more jet fuel. I don't want more gasoline, but somebody's got to do it. So ultraviolet lighting is one of the many, many, many tools that we can use to get rid of the COVID. We got our wiping, we've got our masks, we've got our distancing. This is another a very important arrow in the, the quiver. Mm. And literally with those little arrows of light, we're gonna zap that gosh darn uh, COVID. Now, let me tell you my own observation to this. You know, you talk about the tools in the, in the kit bag and this um, what was re revealed as one early on, I would say hmm, February. And you saw ads on, uh, on the internet for various kinds of home use ultraviolet light de devices. And you said, mm -hmm. that's good. Uh, some of them were <clears throat> expensive. Some of them were not so expensive. They all came from companies you never heard of before. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, you know, I thought that was a good idea. It seems to be a good idea because we know that hospitals use ultraviolet light to sanitize uh, rooms from, from all kinds of antigens. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? It stopped happening. And I don't see those ads anymore. And I, nobody has been talking about it. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought, well, maybe this is another one of those hydroxychloroquine kinds of things mm -hmm. where, you know, it's, it seemed like a good idea and a few people were pushing it, but it actually, it was, it was just poppycock. Um, mm -hmm. Now, now you're saying um, that no, it's, this is a good idea and there are experts around. Uh, I, I'd like you to convince me it's a good idea, Howard. I'd like you to oh. tell me the, the science involved in why oh. ultraviolet light uh, will kill antigens, especially the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you, you've warmed the cockles of my heart here, Jay. To begin with, there are no more ads for UV lighting fixtures because they are ordered up one side and down the other. I ordered a smallish UV fixture for my own home. That was at least five weeks ago. They said, your order is confirmed, Mr. Wig. And I've heard boo since. And they did say, well, we're just a back order just a little bit. And I would say they're not back ordered a little bit. They're back ordered tremendously. So mm, either that or they're scamming you, Howard. That's, a, that's the other possibility, just thinking in logic here. And what, what was your? Uh, There's the other possibility is they're scamming you. Ah, uh, that could be too, could be too except that it's a rather reputable uh, company. That said, since you're on that unsavory subject, there is a lot of junk out there. And let me differentiate <clears throat> between hand-held devices, obviously, little, little things that you scan around. And then there are sort of the industry-grade devices, and those are made to uh, irradiate all an entire room, say an entire hospital room or an entire uh, hotel room. Mm -hmm. So our focus is because there's so much junk out there with the handheld stuff, we're just gonna focus on the industrial grade, the, the bigger things. 
and made specifically for room cleansing or larger areas. You know, there was a there was some there was some journalism about this early on again, maybe in March, um, where uh, it reported that in hospital rooms they have been using ultraviolet light, and mm -hmm. uh, and when they do, whether it's a fixed light or it's a robot light, um, you got to get out of the room. Mm -hmm. You can't stay in the room while while they do this because it has a deleterious effect on human being people. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that? Well, there's two types of these industrial grade lights. One are permanently affixed to the walls, the upper portion of walls of rooms, and they direct the light directly under the ceiling, and they're uh, covered such that the human eye, the people on the floor, when they look up there, they cannot see that light. And therefore, you can run it 24-7. Uh, and the theory there is that when there's germs, virus in the hospital room, you have air circulation, air conditioning generally with a high, what's called a high air change, so that there's a lot of wind turbulence in that room, and all those bad guys go floating towards the ceiling, and boom, they get zapped. When they come down, they, they're, they come down in pieces. So that's one type of fixture. Another type is where you install these things in the ceilings, and they automatically <clears throat> turn off when a human being or any, any moving object in, enters the room. So they're on only during the non-occupied hours. Those are the fixed objects. Then you have my personal favorites, the portable objects. And these range all the way from sort of small tripod devices that can be lifted from room to room or wheeled from room to room, or you mentioned the robotics. That those are the, the Teslas of, of the industry. And the deal there is when you turn it on, there's a one minute waiting period giving the uh, employer lots of time to get the heck out of that room. The second they open the door, boom, those fixtures go off again. Uh, and what we're talking about, oh, let, this, let me back up. There's three types of UV lighting, UV ultraviolet. Uh, the UVA is the longest wavelength and that degrades our skin, case in point. UVB <clears throat> gives us sunburn and gives us uh, cancer. And I speak, you, you've got, uh, the, you know, you're a New Yorker, Jay, so you've still got nice skin, just the same skin as you had when you were a teenager. Oh, it should only be true, but you go right ahead, Howard. I was, I was out in the sun as a youth and a young man for thousands of hours, and I am the proud recipient of four melanoma operations. Melanoma is the cancer that travels through the lymph system, and dozens of, what's it called, ba basal cell carcinoma. Not, not such a bad thing. But anyway, that's UVB and UVA. They degrade the skin, and if you uh, uh, have get that let that get in your eyes, doesn't do your eyes many good. It just dries them out. It doesn't make you blind. Uh, then there's UVC, and that's what we really want. These are very, very, very narrow little uh, wavelengths, and these are the ones that don't do us humans so much bad, or they don't harm us so badly, but they just zap those virus. And so we're concentrating on, on the UVC. So even if a person was exposed to it, especially briefly, no, no big thing. It's just a real- Yeah, well, that's really important. That's out. really important because that's, you know, there was, there is a negative thing about um, ultraviolet light and the mm -hmm. damage it can mm -hmm. do to you. And uh, if we know that UVC is not so damaging, mm -hmm. um, and then we put it up at that level, you know, as, as catches the virus at the circulation level closer to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's nothing to lose and everything to gain there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, talk to me about exactly, if you can, exactly what happens with the UV, the ultraviolet light and the virus. Um, okay. what, what happens there? What's the biochemical process? Why is it so effective? It breaks the, the virus are teeny, teeny, teeny little creatures. They're officially not even living organisms but they do have mass and the waves, especially for the COVID virus, it's 
253.7 nanometers, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter, at exactly that wavelength, when it hits the COVID virus, it breaks it into pieces. And that is not so good for the COVID virus. Mm -hmm. Literally, that's the exact resonance that uh, causes, the, causes the virus to disintegrate. So compare that to washing your hands. You know, I say when you wash your hands and you use a foamy soap, mm -hmm. that soap gets on, uh, you know, the sort of the skin of the virus and deteriorates it. Mm -hmm. um, and when that happens, the virus becomes inert. It, it yep. sort of tears the membrane that surrounds the virus, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, is this the same thing or, or a different, uh, you know, no, th this is a, a different mechanism. It, it's a different mechanism. You use the word coating. Uh, soap as a property that actually- Lipid oil. It's lipid oil. There's lipid well, oil around the virus and the soap mm -hmm. cuts through the lipid oil. Is that mm -hmm. happening here with the ultraviolet or is it different? No, no, totally, totally different uh, mechanism. For the uninitiated, lipids is another word for fat. And there's a lot of fat in good, uh, good soap. And what the lipids do is actually encase the virus. They, they smother it, if, if you will. So it's not going anywhere. And then you wash your hands off and it goes uh, down, down the drain. But I would point out that soap or virus on your hands is in and of itself not all that bad because it can enter through your hands. Your, your skin is a protective mechanism. The danger is that you get your hands up to your mouth, nose, or eyes, and that's when the uh, virus enters. So why don't we use um, ultraviolet light instead of the soap? For example, if I run my hand, you know, it's like you go into the uh, public bathroom. Uh, they have these um, devices that blow hot, hot um, air on mm -hmm. your hands. It saves them the, the towel mm -hmm. cost of the paper. <clears throat> but suppose you ran your hand or Included in that device is an ultraviolet lamp uh, where you run your hand to, to dry it off, but at the same time, uh, your hand is, 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 is subject to the ultraviolet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and therefore it's clean not only by the, by the heat uh, and the hot air is coming out of that device, but also wow. by the ultraviolet. Wouldn't that work? Wow, you, you should have scientists to be, Jay. Wow, that's brilliant deduction, except that even the UVC does have a deleterious effect on your skin. Not nearly as bad as the A or the B, but some, some bad effect. It, it, it dries out the skin. But for brief times, you're, you're absolutely right. You, you would uh, decontaminate your hands or whatever. The, uh, you could put your arms under there too, de decontaminate your arms. Yeah, and that would uh, that would really be better. Recent I mean, I'd take I'd take the risk to my skin if you told me that yeah. it was the the ultraviolet C. Um, mm -hmm. But the other question that that you really haven't answered, well, maybe you have, um, is so so now we have the this um, the light penetrates some part of the virus and it destroys it. it what does it do? It burns it up? Is that what happens? No, it, it disintegrates it. It breaks it into pieces. Again, the, the length is such that when it strikes, it literally causes the virus to explode. I, I've seen the word explode used in different studies. Mm. Okay, well, taking that and, and taking also the fact that uh, when this first came up, uh, the, the report was that hospitals had been using this in one form or another before. Mm -hmm before coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So I say to myself, okay, well, that, that is a big solution about mm -hmm. sterilizing areas in hospitals, sterilizing areas in office, uh, you know, uh, venues and sterilizing things at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, uh, let's see, March, April, May, we're in June, we're going into July. Why haven't we heard about this? We've heard uh -huh. about hydroxychloroquine which doesn't mm -hmm. do anything for you and could hurt you. Um, but we haven't heard boo. May I say that's B-O-O. -O. We haven't heard boo about ultraviolet mm -hmm. light from the White House, the CDC, the NIH, the <laughs> WHO. Only from Howard Wig we hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, I, I've been hanging around you so long. This is why I got so smart. 
<laughs> but the president did mention UV, and he recommended putting the UV. Well, that's right, in your body. Yes. You just you shine it down your gullet or something. Yes, yes. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So fortunately, his advisors called him off of that one very, yeah. very quickly. But if you know, looking back, uh, just retrospectively, if we know then what we know now, say in March or even February, mm -hmm. uh, we would say, look, you know, let's let's get together here. Let's have an approved model uh, mm -hmm. for hospitals uh, and certainly mm -hmm. for business premises um, mm -hmm. and for home, wherever you are, wherever you, yeah. whatever portal you pass through. Let's see if we can get you to go through and whatever wherever the, the the droplets may be let's see if we can blow up the virus um, mm -hmm. with some you know uh, ultraviolet C uh, close mm -hmm. to the ceiling let's you know because the, the cost of that is peanuts compared to mm -hmm. the costs we are paying now um, but nobody's done that nobody's done that except the hospitals that were doing it before Precisely. and we haven't heard much about it actually we have not heard Precisely. much about it. So your next assignment, Jay, should you choose to uh, say yes to it, is to transform Detroit from whatever Detroit is making right now to making UV light fixtures. Just 24 seven shifts, just churn them out by the tens and tens of thousands. This will be made in America product. Incidentally, the big fixtures that I've been studying are all made in America and just get those out the door. The same way we got tanks and Jeeps and everything out during uh, World War II. We should be- I, I, I know you're serious when you say that because I would be serious if I was saying that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what I don't understand is why it hasn't happened. You know, we had the Defense Production Act, which he did not um, activate. <clears throat> and he wasn't focused on this at all. And if the hospital is using it, they're sort of keeping it to themselves. I don't know a single business establishment that has adopted this. Um, mm -hmm. The the uh, stuff I saw on the internet looked like it was a toy. Um, and so here we are having lost this huge opportunity, uh, mm -hmm. and it, which could have saved a lot of lives, am I right? Yeah, yeah. And saved a lot of dollars. Imagine if the hotel industry locally glommed onto this really early in the game. And when they placed orders, those orders would come through quickly. They could have portable units going in. And these are the inexpensive ones. They cost uh, eight, $9,000. And they're on tripods. And you take this thing, and it, it just can takes a trained custodian to do this. Put it into room A, close the door, let it go for 30 minutes, it totally, totally sterilizes that whole room, open the door, light goes off, put it into room B, room C, room D. One person could service 14 of hotel rooms in one shift. And then the hotel could say, we have sterilized our rooms virtually COVID free. And ditto with the retail shops in Waikiki or whatever, ditto with the restaurants, all sterilizing and advertising the heck out of that. That would bring uh, the tourists back like uh, mad and it would create a much, much, much safer environment for them. Well, yeah, we would be branding the, the state as uh, going beyond the call <clears throat> of using the science and using the technology and yeah. spending the money and um, taking, you know, taking these uh, Herculean steps. But, you know, one question about the, say, the hotel room, okay? Suppose mm -hmm. there's uh, some virus, um, you know, under under the blanket. They're mm -hmm. hiding under the blanket, um, and you bring this device in and you shine it all around the room for for half an hour. But the virus is under the blanket, mm -hmm. and ordinary light's not going to get there. It's a dark, mm -hmm. shadowy place under the blanket. Um, is the ultraviolet light going to get there? How can you say that you've sterilized the whole room when you haven't gotten underneath things where light doesn't go? Or underneath chairs, underneath beds? You got uh, it. Jay, a scientist you should be. Good question. So the areas that are not directly radiated, it's the radiative force that uh, zaps the virus. You, there's still some left over but there's the concept of dose. And dose means 
refers to the intensity of the virus that comes after you. If only a thousand virus come after you, your immune system could take care of it like uh, nothing. If a million virus come after you, it has a very good chance of overwhelming you and putting you in the hospital. What the UV light does is eradicate, and this is right on the manufacturer's literature, and is carefully, carefully studied. I looked at so many studies, 99.9% .9 of the virus that are in that room do get eradicated. Hence, if there's still some left over under the sheets or whatever, their numbers are very small and the immune system, the dosage is very small, the immune system can take care of them very, very easily. Mm. What about using mirrors to uh, yeah. bounce the light back from the floor, say, uh, wow. to the bottom of the bed or to places where light would not necessarily mm. fall? Mm -hmm. You're talking about, uh, you must have been a scientist in your previous <laughs> life. You're talking now about backscatter. And backscatter refers to the fact that the, this light is comprised of photons and photons can go bouncing around like ping pong balls. So if they hit a reflective surface and the ideal surface would be mirrors, they bounce back. Say it hits a mirror by a bed, the photons go under the bed and zap the virus there with almost the same effectiveness as the direct uh, force of the uh, photon in the first place. Howard is brilliant. <clears throat> and the question lingers. Mm -hmm. um, wh why haven't we done this so far? Why hasn't yeah. the CDC said boo about it? Um, why, why has Dr. Fauci not said a word? It seems That's, to me uh, like sterilization is the answer to an epidemic or at least mm -hmm. a substantial weapon. So maybe mm -hmm. it's cost. You said before that <clears throat> in the hospital or the hotel setting, you know, for a given unit, it would cost, what did you say, eight or nine thousand dollars. Yeah, that's that, a lot that's of bread. And if you want to, if you want to populate the whole hospital with these devices, it's good, or a hotel, it's going to cost you a bunch of money. Is that what's holding this up? Uh, that's part of it, but the cost really isn't that great. The return on investment for a hospital to have these devices, where, as you know, the main cause of sickness in the nation is being in a hospital. So they do everything they can to sterilize rooms. And when they spend, some of these devices cost over $100,000. You, if you've prevented uh, 10 sicknesses from occurring because of these being in here, you, you paid for that uh, device many times over. Mm -hmm. Ditto a uh, hotel room you can, could get a device for as little as eight or nine thousand dollars. You do fourteen rooms in one shift. You get fourteen couples going into there, hundred and fifty a night. Da, 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 da. You paid for this device in the first night or so. Well, to say nothing about uh, senior facilities and mm -hmm. prisons. Yep. And you know who knows what? All these places where you have high concentration of virus. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. A few of those things could not only save lives, but, but save the economy. What's that worth? What's it worth uh, to restore our tourism, at least part mm -hmm. of it, uh, and have people believe in us again as a safe place? Yeah. Okay, well, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, but I have a question, though. You know, are there other Howard Wigs elsewhere? Are there other states? Are there other D-beds in other states who are thinking about this or inviting this guy, yeah. William Banfleth from New York, wherever he's from, to come out and talk to them? Uh, are you part of a movement or is it just you guys? No, oh, it seems to be the Howard and Jay show so far. <laughs> I'll go with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we had, at last count, we had 180 people already signed up for the webinar and that was 24 hours ago. Mm -hmm. And I've, how many uh, can you how, how many can you accommodate? Uh, that it's it's a Hawaii Energy uh, Zoom program, so we kind of overwhelmed them a couple of webinars ago. We were well above a hundred, so they increased their capacity. I think they can go up to a thousand or so now. Well, that's that's encouraging, but you know what? This is a sort of timeless. I shouldn't say timeless, but relatively speaking, this is timeless. I don't have to watch this live. I can watch mm -hmm. a video of this. So the big mm -hmm. question, Howard, is for those people who you know are not going to be available, who don't find out about it, 
um, whatever reason, are they going to be able to see the video of this later? Big question. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. This is being paid with uh, you. You you're you're paying for it, Jay. Because your part of your electricity bill goes to Hawaii Energy, and Hawaii Energy any, and we're state government. Of course, we have to make all of our uh, productions public, so it'll go into the. Uh, uh, Hawaii Energy Office uh, website and any, anybody else who wants the website, I'll, uh, I'm going to offer it. I'm the president of the local chapter of IES, Illuminating Engineering Society, and I'm going to offer it to uh, other IES chapters as well. I know well, that would include think tech, wouldn't it? I mean, we could put it on our stream uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people would have the benefit there. We could put a link to it on our website. I mean, I Absolutely. think we, we have to get the word out to any place which has communal activity which has a high concentration of people, um, mm -hmm. any indoor place where droplets can, can spread the virus. Um, mm -hmm. This has got to be a really important part about, about stopping the curve. I mean, actually stopping the curve. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it just amazes me. I've been, mm. Does the government, I mean, you are the government, but does the government know, do the leaders of our you know, health uh, organizations know about that? I hope Bruce Anderson is going to watch this. I hope uh, 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 Lieutenant Governor Green is going to watch this. Uh, we, Josh Green, we, we need to have them all know about it because a dollar spent on this is a dollar spent in time. A dollar mm -hmm. spent on this can have huge rewards yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and make us feel safe. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the price of the webinar is right also. Yeah, it's zero, it's, it's tab, free. So the viewers don't have to uh, bother yeah. paying for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so he's not coming. He's just, he's not coming. He's just going to do uh, the webinar from wherever he is then. From, uh, yeah, he teaches. He's a professor at Penn State University. Yeah. Now, is there a uh, website or someplace out there where we can look right now and read up on this and and use our own thought process to, you know, validate its uh, effectiveness. Uh, suppose I suppose I've gotten into the mode of um, not not taking any advice unless I can verify it by my own analysis. Where where can I find out more, Howard? I wish I had the uh, uh, address in front of me, but the Illuminating Engineering Society had a uh, a three hour webinar recently on this very topic. And I think I wouldn't be out of place to uh, name the manufacturers since there's only two of them in America. One is called Puro, P-U-R-O, and they certainly have good websites and they have uh, good videos also. Oh, incidentally, uh, they're also using in your own New York City, uh, Jay, uh, the uh, New York Tra Transit Authority is vaporizing the COVID in their subway trains. Very and, good. See, and, somebody yeah. somebody is following the action here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Pu yeah. Puro is what's one. The, what's, what's the second one? Do you recall the uh, name of the other one? Puro, P-U-R-O. The other is Xenon. X-E-N-O-N. No, no, no. Xenex. X-E-N-E-N. -E -N. Okay. Well, I'm sure it can be I'm sure people can find it on the internet, do a yeah, little search yeah, on ultraviolet readily available. COVID. And, and they do have uh, videos also. Okay, so I, we may have a really important solution here in this show. And I, mm -hmm. and I hope that uh, the people uh, you know, who can do something about it in the government and in industry will, will see mm -hmm. this and understand it and follow up on it. But the question is you and your, your order that was five weeks ago, what are you going to do about it? I mean, you want you want to have your own home safe too. Um, you know, uh, well, are you going to do anything more than wait wait on this um, this this uh, mail order situation, which is not not very promising? Are you going nope. to do something else? Well, can you suggest something? Maybe I can go to Home Depot and buy. I, I think they're probably sold out, and mm -hmm. that that product probably wouldn't be as good as the product that I that I ordered. Well, you know, it's probably worth looking on Amazon or any number of other mail order houses and um, and seeing what they have to offer and uh, who's making it, whether it's those companies you mentioned, somebody mm -hmm. else. Uh, it's probably worthwhile doing some research on your own about exactly uh, how it works, what kind of devices are most effective. 
Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a whole new world out there because right now um, we do have a, an escalating curve. Right now, as other states, uh, we should be worried about uh, the fact that um, you know, reopening has created a resurgence. And we have to mm -hmm. find whatever, whatever helps. And this could be a very important uh, tool. Very important. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's not the silver bullet, but it's a really important bullet. I'll tell yeah. You. yeah. Well, thank you, Howard. This has been a great mm -hmm. discussion. Very valuable, very important. And I look mm -hmm. forward to talking with you again soon. Good luck on the webinar. And uh, I, I would like to get the, the link to it if you, if you think of it. And we'll put it up I on will our, definitely on think our of it. Yeah. Thank you, Harry. Aloha. Oh, uh